All right. Um, a very good morning to all of us and happy Sabbath. Uh, we welcome you once again to our Sabbath school discussion. This particular Sabbath day, we are going to be discussing lesson 11, uh, managing in tough times. With me in my panel today, I will uh, let them introduce themselves and then we shall have a word of prayer. We'll begin from my right. Happy Sabbath. I'm Rumona Pio. I'm glad to be worshipping with you today. I salute all in Jesus' name. Happy Sabbath. I'm Elder Pere Nyaroya from New Life Seventh-day Adventist Church, 5th Ngong Avenue. I greet you all in Jesus' name and welcome. Amen. 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 My name is Onsongo, Rafael Nyamisoa, and I would invite us all to bow our heads and close our eyes. Let's partake in prayer as we begin. Our kind and loving Father and Master, what in heaven we humbly come before you this blessed day through Christ our Lord and our Savior, asking that you may enlighten us, dear Lord, from this lesson study. May this be a time of reflection, a time of decision making, dear Lord. Even as we uh, may be going through tough times, we'll go through tough times, and uh, indeed, tough times are ahead. Be with us and guide us and help us to know how to effectually manage during tough times. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So uh, perhaps uh, ask uh, my panelists here with me today, from uh, starting with Elder Jared, what exactly do you understand uh, as a tough time? Have you ever been through a tough time? And uh, can you perhaps, if, if, if possible, share with us? OK, thank you, brother. Uh, tough times. <clears throat> These are times when you find that you cannot access and help, a time when you cannot defend yourself and you say things are tough, internally you cannot mobilize anything. You need an external help, at least to take you outside that situation. I have been in tough times Many, many, many times, not once. <laughs> Let me just mention once. Uh, the year 1990, I was very sick, and the sickness had defied all, all medicine. Then one day, <clears throat> I was just so discouraged and so down, and wondering what I could do. Now, an uncle of mine came to see me, and uh, I was in the house. I heard him conversing with my mother outside. And this is what he said. Eh? What has failed in one part, try it in another part. <laughs> <laughs> in my community, what that means, if it has failed in the hospital, go to the witch doctors. <laughs> so, for many people, that is the outside help that can come in that situation. I got scared because my parents are Christians. <laughs> they are brought us in the Christian setting. Now then I started imagining those stories I used to hear about the witch doctors. It was scary. I remember mentioning a prayer <laughs> in my bed. And telling God, let it never happen that I go to a witch doctor. Amen. And I remember after my uncle left, I told mom, <clears throat> I know I'm very sick. And uh, my recovery is not guaranteed. Yeah? Mm. I told her whether I'm going to live or die. I want to live with the Lord or die with the Lord. Amen. Yeah, so... There are those tough times. I, I had just given, hope, given up hope. But I thank God that he came in at that point when I, had, I could not mobilize any internal strength in me to take myself out of this problem. Thank you very much. Amen. Ramona? Uh -huh. 
uh, tough times, like Elder has rightly said, is when you can really not access any help. But um, as a young person, <laughs> I know even my finalists have been young, and we've faced <laughs> tough times as young people. And especially for young people, when you don't have a job, I, I think that is usually the most tough thing for you, because you want to do this, you, you feel like you are stalling behind as others are progressing in their lives, as others are doing Maybe I see Raphael here has bought a car and I haven't bought a car. <laughs> and I feel like, wow, well, now this is now so tough for me. And it could also be mental issues. Uh, we really have currently people talking about depression, mental health and such stuff. Yeah, so I think from the young point of view, it's really the things I haven't been able to achieve. Yeah. Uh, Elder Perry. Thank you so much. <coughs> It is important to note that tough times may be in different formats. It can come socially, mm. it can be spiritual, mm. because of either moral fall mm. or something of that nature. It can be due to health, like mm. Elder's case, mm. or it can be even academics. Yeah, yeah. For young people, mm. getting a supplementary can be a tough time. <laughs> a retake. But socially, just being left by your girlfriend <laughs> or boyfriend. <laughs> My friend, it is like the whole world has, uh, has collapsed. You wonder where, where, which one is uh, uh, people waiting for that Jesus is coming mm. and the world will end. Mm. So uh, it comes in various formats. Financially, it mm. can also be like Rumona was saying, mm. when you don't have a job and you're a young person mm. or even not a young person, you don't have a job uh, 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 and you have even a family or mm. even a loan, mm. <coughs> it can be tough. Mm. And I think that one is in contextual matter, manner of what <coughs> we are learning today mm. is very key financially. When the world is tough financially, economically, mm. politically, mm. it is tough. When we become helpless mm. that you seek, you, you see no end, no mm. way out. Mm. That is indeed tough time. Tough time indeed. Our key text uh, for this particular uh, memory text for this particular lesson is uh, found from the book of Psalms 50 verse 14 and 15 in which David writes and says, Offer to God thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. God giving us the promise that we should be able, if we are faithful, giving, offering to God our thanksgiving and paying our vows, then in the day of trouble, we can always do what? Call we can always him. call upon him. Mm. And he says he will mm. deliver and we shall give him the glory. Mm. Indeed, sometimes in our world, our world seems to be spinning out of control. There are wars, bloodshed, crime, immorality, natural disasters, pandemics, economic uncertainty, political corruption, and more. There is a strong urge for individuals and families to think first of their own survival. Uh, there's that whole, that whole concept of building your own ark, mm. building a buffer to protect yourself and your family, mm. you know, from the things uh, that are happening in the world. Even in our country today, mm. in terms of uh, economically, the cost of uh, living mm. is, is rising mm. by the day, mm. and um, the public wage bill also is expanding. Mm. And uh, a, lot is, a lot is being required from uh, the local taxpayer, mm. from the local man. And uh, this could be things that uh, are tough for mm. others, uh, even in terms of uh, the moral uh, conditions of the country recently with the, um, uh, with the, the changes that have been made uh, to the law in terms of with, re with reference to the LGBTQ community. Mm. And many, I would see, I'd see many people um, are viewing it as a tough time. And so, mm. indeed, uh, people are looking for ways to survive. So, accordingly, much thought is given to seeking security in these uncertain times, which of course is understandable. Mm. And so, the question then is for us, uh, how then do we manage these tough times? Elder Manyara, would you perhaps highlight to us Monday? Okay, thank you for for the opportunity. We have uh, seen that uh, tough times are here with us. Yes. We cannot escape them. We are still on earth mm. where sin came and uh, disrupted the flow of things. Now, <clears throat> during tough times, there are many times we depend on our own resources. Mm. 
and I can remember when COVID hit. Mm. <laughs> that was the toughest time yes. <laughs> for the people in the world. Mm. <laughs> On that Sunday when the lockdown was announced, <laughs> people were in great fear. Mm. Yes. They were trying to see what do I have. Yes. Others started buying stock mm. to put in their what? In their homes. In their houses. Mm. Depending on their own what? Resources. Mm. David tried the same thing. In the book of Chronicles chapter chapter 20 21 Verses 1 to 14. <clears throat> Here, David, a king who was installed by God, mm. chosen by God, mm. decide, decides to number his army. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? And his commander tells him not to do the same thing. But <clears throat> David insists. Mm -hmm. He wants to know his strength. The funniest thing when you look at uh, that, sorry, First Chronicles, it was First Chronicles? Chapter, chapter 21. 21. Chapter 21. 21. 21. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Verse 1 to 14. Now, the beginning of verse 1 is scary. Mm -hmm. And Satan stood up against Israel. Now, Satan stands against the people of God. Mm. Then, what does he do next? And provoked David to number Israel. He provokes the king mm. to number Israel. He wants David to do what? To rely on his strength, mm -hmm. on his own resources. Mm -hmm. When the his servant told him not to, he refused. Verse 4, he prevailed against the servant. Do it. And as we continue reading down, verse 7, we realize that God was displeased with this thing mm -hmm. and therefore he smote Israel. Now the worst thing to get a solution to this David is given three options mm. which are difficult to make a decision about. Verse Sorry? <coughs> From verse yeah, 10. verse 12. Mm -hmm. It's given options. Either three years of famine. Is that a good option? <laughs> a scary one. Mm -hmm. Or three months to be destroyed by thy force. Another worst option. While that the sword of thine enemies overtaketh thee, or else three days the sword of the Lord even the pestilence in the land and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. Famine, being defeated by your enemies, a pestilence striking your people. Which one can you go for El Daupere? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> it becomes very hard. I would go the, uh, David's way. <laughs> <laughs> it is so scary. David offered himself to the Lord. And he opted to allow the Lord do whatever he wants to do as long as it is done in Israel. Mm. Not to be struck by enemies. Mm -hmm. And that's why we find in verse 14, the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel and there fell 70,000 men. You can see what can happen to us when we rely on our resources, mm. what happens when we run out of options? Mm. 
when we run out of like now during that COVID time, mm. when you run out of this food, what will happen? This is where the problem is. If we trust in the Lord in tough times, mm -hmm. it will always make a way out of our situation. Yes. In fact, we need to always cry to God. I remember what the lesson writer was saying that even a ruler, the British ruler, was attributed to telling his army that put your trust in God. <laughs> yeah? Mm. And keep your powder dry. Mm -hmm. He is trying to encourage these people mm. that yes, you have the guns. Yes. Mm -hmm. You are going to shoot, you are mm -hmm. going to fight, mm -hmm. you may even win. Mm -hmm. But remember that it's only God who gives what? The victory. victory. And we should also remember mm -hmm. that in our situations, mm -hmm. it's only God mm -hmm. who is the final solution. Amen. We have no other solution. Amen. Otherwise, the Lord who created us mm -hmm. knows what we need. Mm -hmm. We only need to rely on Him. Just look at the way children are. They rely so much on their parents for solutions. Mm -hmm. In tough times, they run mm -hmm. and they cling on mm -hmm. their what? On their parents. On their parents mm -hmm. Because they know in their parents' arms, they're what? They they're safety. safe. And this is the same thing that we need to do. Trusting in God, not in the numbers that we have. Amen. Actually, when you read through that, as Job was counting, in Israel there were a million and something mm. armies. Mm. In Judah, there were 400 and something mm -hmm. armies. Although he did not count God and mm. Benjamin. Mm. A million army. You can be proud of them. But remember, a million army without God <laughs> is nothing. Is nothing. Mm. All of them can be cleared. Mm. So trusting in God and not our resources is the admonition we have been given in tough times. Mm. Thank you very much. Mm. Indeed, uh, Ramona. Uh, what I find in Monday part that, you know, I don't know if David forgot where God had brought him because David was nothing. David was just a shepherd. Mm -hmm. And even when Samuel had come to anoint him, he was not even there. He was somewhere there. And he had to ask, do you have another person, <laughs> another son? Because God has not chosen any of these ones. And David had to be waited for. He had to come. So I think he had forgotten that. And it happens to us so many times. So we, you have applied for a job. You are in crisis. You are sick. You forget. Like, you know, the way Elder is saying that, he, the uncle said that there is another way. You know, you forget how God has been faithful to you all through. Now you want to try other means. Whatever The census was not wrong because in Numbers chapter 1, there is God commanding Moses to do what? To do census, to count the number of Israelites. The intention, David was illusioned by the numbers. He, he was thinking that my victory will come from the numbers, numbers that I have. Could we be the same as David, thinking that our victory will come from our resources? Our victory will come from the people we know. Our victory will come from uh, the job I hold, the family I come from. You know, what is that that we are thinking is our victory except for God? Yeah. Hello, Perry. Thank you. Uh, I think, um, as Ramona has put it, the intention was very key. David wanted to be like the other nations. Yeah. You see, like today, you see countries carrying out military drills mm. to show the number of armies. Mm. Recently, when Russia invaded Ukraine, we would follow, if you are keen, through Al Jazeera and the media and other outlets, uh, they could compare mm. how many foot soldiers, army, mm. ground soldiers does Russia have compared to Ukraine. Mm. Uh -huh. uh, uh, attack helicopters, <laughs> all those, they would, 
then <coughs> the submarines, mm. nuclear bombers, mm. they would give that. Uh -huh. Even up to recently now they would say, okay, Europe, uh, Germany to bring the, the Leopard tank, <laughs> America to bring the Abraham tank, <laughs> you see. <laughs> so this is the kind of thing which mm. David wanted to show, mm. to know that he's also playing in the league mm. of okay. nations in yeah. terms of, but men. then what we get, <laughs> mm. so that <clears throat> we get that. You know, it is God who owns the seasons. Yes. Mm -hmm. The time may be tough for you, my mm. brother. Even right now, people are crying. Times are mm. tough. But there are those who, to whom it is not tough. Mm. Indeed. There are people who are benefiting. They lot cannot relate. <laughs> so, the point is that mm. we should, I love as David ended it, that <clears throat> he decided to surrender mm. on the side of God. Mm. Because even when God punishes us, he punishes us out of mercy Amen. for mm. our redemption mm. you know when even when god cast the ground and he told man he will work mm. it was with a list with a lot of mercy mm. with a lot of love mm. for our redemptive purposes mm. so the thing is that whichever times it is in we are in whether it is economic social mm. financial or financial for that matter political we need to surrender on the side of the lord Amen. for he is the one who owns the seasons mm. indeed indeed mm. an interesting story there in a, from monday in mm. which david in a time of peace decides to number the military might mm. and uh, as a result of this he, he almost uh, loses now 70000 mm. you know from that uh, from that uh, that mistake mm. in essence uh, when he decided to trust in his own resources and not in god mm. the lesson there uh, for us all then perhaps if we were to go back now to look at uh, the life of another king mm. in the book of uh, in, in the book of second chronicles chapter 20 verse 1 to 22 now mm. going back to sunday mm. where this is an, an, another si si scenario another king mm. but now he is intimidated in a time of trouble mm. in a time of trouble i don't know whether ramona you can take us through the story okay so the story is found in the book of second chronicles chapter 20 and it is how to behave. David's story is how not to behave. <laughs> and <laughs> King Jehoshaphat's story is how to behave during trouble, mm -hmm. during crisis. This man is surrounded by a magnitude of army and he's here and a report has come that you are surrounded. And unlike David, who just out of nowhere wakes up to count the numbers, him he surrenders to, he, he has a different surrender. While David surrenders to the numbers, he surrenders to who? To God. Mm -hmm. So he cries to God and there is verse 6 which says that, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And you, do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? He's asking God, like he's really surrendering to the power of God. And there is a verse, uh, I think it's verse 10. There's a verse where, verse 12, O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Mm -hmm. He's mentioning the fact that there's a great multitude surrounding him, but he's not telling God, you know, I, ha I also have my army on this side, mm -hmm. and it is small. He's not focusing on his weakness. He's focusing on the power of God. We do not know how to do. He's so helpless. You know, I don't know. I'm just privileged to be with men around me. <laughs> and I don't know if you men just come up and say, but there I'm helpless. <laughs> and if you do, what impact does it have on you? Can you stand in front of your family and tell them, but there I don't know what to do? How will they look at you? They look at you and question your capabilities as the father, as the leader of the house. But Jehoshaphat is not afraid to do that because he surrenders to who? To, to God. God. And he declares a fast for the whole nation. It is not a fast that he is doing alone. He is not uh, closing himself up with his people and telling them we are going to do this. He is not calling on a strategy meeting. His strategy is be helpless in front of God. Go to God in cries, in tears, and in prayers, and 
as a united front, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, most of us when we are in trouble, we'd rather be in isolation. Mm -hmm. Where we forget that there is power in coming and sharing and bearing one another's burdens, as in Galatians chapter six, verse one to five. We should bear one another's burdens, but most of us just hide and we, we want to think we can solve things on our own like David. We want to depend on our resources like David. But him, he knows that this problem is our problem, so we are going to go to God as a united front. And God does what? He tells him that, do not worry. And this is a repetition of what happens in Exodus when God tells the Israelites, the Egyptians you see today will not do what? You will not see them again. again. Mm -hmm. And God fights for them because even when they go, they find the war is done. What they do is just they collect the spoils from them from those people that had died. And it took them three days to just collect all that. So from what I learned from the Sunday part is we should always run to God, like Nehemiah, like Esther. When they were in trouble, they ran to God. We should go to God with all our fears, all of them, not hiding even one of them. Another thing is that if we call upon the Lord, like we started with the key text of Psalms chapter 50, if we call upon the Lord, he hears and he comes to our rescues. The battle is not ours. The battle is the Lord's. We should believe in the Lord and we will be established. We should believe in his prophets and we will prosper. The thing here is we should not trust in man, like in Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 15. Cursed is the man who does what? Trusts in, the, in, the, in man. And verse 8 says that, but blessed is he who trusts in who? In the Lord. So from Sunday part, from Jehoshaphat's story, is really trusting in God and trusting him fully, 100%. Amen, amen. I don't know whether Elder Manyara would like to chip in. Uh, you have to be mad to trust in God. Because you will be doing crazy things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the lesson, mm. what Joseph did, he assembles the people with who in front? Singers. The choir. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> what was How the do you face an enemy do? with a choir? <laughs> Are you trying to entertain them? And it is a great multitude. And it's a great what? <laughs> yes. Multitude. Mm. The war, as my sister said, it's not ours. Amen. It is the Lord's. Amen. And that is what Joseph had mm. knew. Mm -hmm. And they trusted in the Lord. And he began mm. with him. Many are times, mm -hmm. why we fail mm -hmm. is that when we are faced with tough times, we just start by struggling with the internal resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think there's a so, there's a secular song I, I have heard people talk about. I don't, I don't know what. Look inside you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Most of the time, that's the first thing that we do. Mm -hmm. We forget that we have the Lord, mm -hmm. and then the Lord now will strengthen you from inside. Open your eyes and show you the way out of what mm -hmm. the tough times. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Indeed, indeed. Elder Perry. Uh, thank you. I think um, as been put, it is uh, as Ramona had said, in the case of Jehoshaphat, it is a case of what to do mm. in times of crisis. Mm. In the case of David, in this case, particular instance, what not to do mm -hmm. in times of a crisis. They say when you are in a hole, the last thing to do is, is to continue digging. <laughs> so <laughs> that is... What, Mm. what not to do mm. but here Jehoshaphat is in a hole and we see what you should do mm. you do not dig much more mm. digging much more not digging here mean going to the Lord mm. and it requires truly a great amount of faith and trust mm. in the Lord mm. um, but I love one point also that even as we do that we have to do our next part yes. so that we do not become indolent and fail to do what is duly ours. Mm -hmm. We have to do what is in our power as human beings. Mm -hmm. Then now we surrender to God mm -hmm. so that we, if it is preparing for an examination for a student, you have to prepare adequately. Mm -hmm. You have to study and study wide and deep. Mm -hmm. If it is business venture mm. we have to do due diligence mm. 
in all our transactions above board as per the legal requirements. Mm -hmm. Then now we leave after we've done what we are in our what is in our powers to do, then we surrender to the Lord. Amen. So we cannot be indolent or slothful in doing the work. We have to do it, but realize that victory is not in the chariots. Mm. Victory is not in the armory. Mm. Victory is not in the guns. Mm. Victory is with the Lord. Amen. 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 Indeed, indeed, the victory comes from the Lord. Mm. Proverbs uh, 21 and verse 31 says that a horse is prepared for the day of battle, but victory comes from the Lord. And so uh, the story of David and the story of Jehoshaphat are there to give us lessons in life. Mm. David, in a time of peace, looked at his... Um, uh, aimed to secure himself even further mm. and so he wanted to number his soldiers uh, the men of war men of men of uh, fighting ability mm. whereas joseph who had already fortified his cities and already had an army and was ready mm. when now faced with a great multitude decides to do what decides to, to look god. to god mm. and so the lesson for there for all of us is not to trust in our resources mm. Uh, David also again writes and says some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the, the name, name of, of the Lord, Lord our God. David, mm. after having learned his lesson. Yeah. Mm. Therefore, the acknowledgement, the, the, the injunction and the, the encouragement is for us to simply do what? To put God first, mm -hmm. not to trust in our resources mm. in the time of trouble mm. or even in time of peace, yes. time of uh, prosperity. Mm. You know, sometimes we could uh, assume that uh, the positions that we have and, uh, and the peace that we enjoy mm. are as a result of our resources, yes. as a result of uh, my bank account. Mm. Uh, therefore, I don't have ulcers. Mm. vis vis somebody else who looks at their bank account and uh, they have sleepless nights. Mm. So nonetheless, to both the wealthy and those who are struggling, to both the upper class and the middle class and the, all the other classes in between, the message for us is to do what? To trust, trust in God in and not in our resources. Mm. So we move on swiftly now to uh, Tuesday. Rascal Daupere to lead us through Tuesday. You know, the question now is we are talking of managing mm. in tough, tough time. times. Mm. Managing in tough times. Mm. Managing what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> managing the resources for the master mm. till he comes, he comes. Mm. in tough times times mm -hmm. which we have seen we are seeing that is a very big question managing in tough times it should be a question but mm -hmm. it's been put as a statement mm -hmm. managing what managing for the master till he comes mm -hmm. and we every uh, uh, discussion we have gotten here is answering on how we should manage one we've seen from the typical examples of what to do mm -hmm. put god first mm -hmm. in the case of your shafat mm -hmm. what do we do in tough times we give, let God be first. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a clarion call in, a, in congruency with what the stewardship has been talking of. That in everything, give, make God be first. Mm -hmm. When you earn, mm -hmm. let God be first. Christ. In everything, let God be first. Mm -hmm. So, how do we manage in tough times? Once, one answer we've gotten in the case of Joshua, let God be first. Mm -hmm. In the case of David, we are also seeing that we should still surrender to God to be first in our lives. I had an example, a case example with a, another sister-in-law of mine. We had done a harvest and it was not a, a serious harvest. <laughs> then I asked them, because it was my garden, they harvested for me. Did you people give the tithe out of the maize which you harvested? They told me, no, 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 the, the, the harvest was so bad. <laughs> the maize quality was not bad. <laughs> so we felt we could not give it to God. Of course, their reasoning was a bit fairer, <laughs> that they felt ashamed. But I told them, no, that is the harvest like you people harvest? had gotten. Mm. You should have made God be fast. Mm. So we find that not only in fair weather, mm. but in all situations, let God be fast. Yes. So that is one thing we are getting now. When we come now, the question one would ask, uh, we are all in difficult times and different times. Mm -hmm. What do we do? As it has been said, naturally, we usually set to default modes, which is survival mode. Mm -hmm. Trying to cut down the spending, which is not bad, mm -hmm. because even austerity measures, economists tell the government, 
And actually, even our politicians told us recently in the elections that we are not going to borrow. But uh, anyway, for politicians, who they say what they don't uh, they mean. What they what they what they say they don't mean. What they mean they don't say because as soon as they take power, you see the contrary. Borrowing continues. But naturally, people will reset to some mode survival, cutting down the spending. Which even economists say which should be the thing. You don't continue digging. We try now to put resources for ourselves. But the question is, which should come to us, is that, and in some cases, we, it, it goes even to the neglect of God's duties. The question which we are told is that, what we ask ourselves, what then should we do? We know the natural tendency people will reset to survival mode, where we are now going to survive. Whatever I have is for me, like with that lady, I think the lady of Zarephath, the lady who told Elijah, we only have a, a little, it was Elisha, mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. that we are going to eat with my son and, and then, then we die. die. Survival mode. Mm -hmm. But one thing we get here, in the book of Peter, Peter is telling us some, some important words here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the book of Second Peter chapter 3, Peter tells us, in, in Second Peter chapter 3, uh, chapter 3, uh, Second Peter, I don't know, Rumona, if you've mm -hmm. gotten it from verse 3. Yeah, knowing this first, the scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Mm -hmm. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this, they willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water. Even if I leave it there, the question is uh, we are being told of the situation in the last times mm -hmm. where there will be a tendency to hold mm -hmm. tendency of greed, mm -hmm. of self. Mm -hmm. That is what the Bible is telling us here of selfishness of surviving it is mine and mine alone mm. but until the danger and that is what paul also wrote that the love of money mm -hmm. is the root cause of all evil, evil. Mm -hmm. you see the point here we get that we need to simplify things mm -hmm. we need to simplify and know that in those so-called tough times there is tendency of going back to default mode of survival. Mm -hmm. And that default mode has the danger of greed, mm -hmm. the danger of, of selfishness. Mm -hmm. To now be focused to search for accumulation of more and more. But we are told we shouldn't forget mm -hmm. the priority which is our souls. Amen. The priority which is our hearts. We need to know that even as we work hard to provide for our families, perfect. We need to know that even as we enjoy the word God has given us, we should not be deviated mm. from the main goal of our souls. Mm. So managing for the master in tough times, till it comes, mm. God first. Mm. We need to be on the side of the Lord. Mm. But then we get to know Amidst all that, we need to realize that our soul, there is also our hearts to be purified, mm. to be sanctified. Amen. Because in tough times, mm. there is danger of survival. Like Elder Manyare would had said, 16th of March last year, you know, 2020, my dear, there was impulse buying, there were tissue papers <laughs> ran out of, <laughs> uh, of and soap, stock, and even soup. <laughs> They ran out yeah. because people went to a survival mode. Mm. The theories maybe this disease comes like this, mm. all that. The, you see that mode, but we need to not forget the sanctification of our hearts. Amen. Thank you. Indeed, Amen. indeed. Um, uh, borrowing uh, uh, from the topic, uh, the heading for Tuesday, time to simplify and. Um, 
reading from Second Peter 3, uh, where Peter is speaking and saying that indeed, in these last days, scoffers have come, mm. uh, writing off the the reality that will be the second coming of Christ. Mm. And in, in fact, he says to us who have believed these things, in verse 11, he says, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought he to be in mm. all holy conversation mm. and godliness? Mm. He is reminding us that the things that we acquire in this world, mm. the comforts that we have, these resources. Mm. In fact, the lesson writer even goes ahead and says that uh, when Christ comes again a second time, mm. and maybe perhaps we should look at uh, when God w took uh, Elijah. Mm. Did Elijah go with a suitcase <laughs> of his, his prized possessions? <laughs> <laughs> I want to yeah. his item. <laughs> yes. But no, mm. uh, even on the second coming of Christ, mm. we shall not go with, with, our, with our resources. Mm. Sometimes, no. uh, God forbid, you may not even go with some of your friends. Mm. They may not be there. And so, the question then is for us to find things, to put things in perspective. Mm. Indeed, the question then is, is it time to simplify? Mm. Elder? Thank you. <clears throat> Actually, it is time to simplify. It yes. is. Mm. Yes. Mm. Uh, when I was reading the lesson, this is a summon topic. I, I was shocked. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that there are some times mm -hmm. uh, we focus on acquiring wealth and acquiring and acquiring and acquiring mm -hmm. that we even forget mm -hmm. serving God. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. We forget appreciating Him mm -hmm. who gives us the power to get what? The wealth. To get the wealth. Mm -hmm. And I know as, as we shall be looking at Wednesday, it ends up becoming our master mm -hmm. of our university. And that's why Ellen White was advising in a council st to st on stewardship that it is, n it is now that our brethren should be cutting down their possessions instead of increasing them. Mm -hmm. Here, we may misinterpret. If you have an opportunity to get more wealth, do you say no? <laughs> that is not what Ellen White is saying here. The issue is, as God is blessing you, mm. are you putting it for yourself, mm. becoming greedy, mm. as El Dober will say? Mm. The more that is coming into your way, are you thinking about God's cause? Mm. Yeah, mm. the more you get, the more you support God's word. Mm. Because that which you call your own mm. should not be too much mm. because it will preoccupy your mind. Yes. And many people have lost lives. Mm. There was some years back, I think should be around 30 years ago, when the government was investing in a certain place. There is this man who had really invested in that place. Mm -hmm. And he was going to lose his property. That he had taken time to invest in. Mm -hmm. He asked one of his sons. Do you mean that that property of mine is also going to be destroyed? The son said yes. And the old man exclaimed, what? That was his last statement. Mm -hmm. He rested. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? God had given him an opportunity to acquire wealth. Mm -hmm. But now the wealth became what? It's God. God. So that is why the more we get, the less that we call our own should be. Mm -hmm. So that the more that comes in should go towards supporting God's what? God's work. God's cause. Mm. It is very important and it is time to simplify. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Indeed, indeed. Time to simplify. Moving on to Wednesday where we are told to look at our priorities. Mm. Mm. We are led from the book of Mark chapter 12 and verse 30 mm. where Christ uh, in answering uh, a scribe as to what is the greatest commandment and he tells the scribe that you shall love the Lord your God with, with all, all your heart, heart, with all your soul, mm. with all your mind, and, and with all your strength. strength. Mm. When, when we give all to Christ, there is nothing left for another master. Mm. That is the way it is, and that is the way it must be. Mm. We're called to reflect on Matthew 6 and verse 24, mm. uh, in which uh, Christ tells us that no man can serve 
two masters. Two masters. Either you will serve money or, or God. Or God. Mm. And so uh, the question there to us then, what has been our experience, mm. Elder Opere, with this statement? Yeah, thank you. I think uh, in the interest of time, because I know time is short, mm. it is true. Uh, they say ladies can double task. <laughs> so I have been wondering whether they can double task <laughs> in this case. Uh -huh. But I know from you, my, your position and mine as a man, mm. it is not possible. But when the Bible has said it, it, is not it possible. didn't say it is hard. Mm -mm. My dear, it is not possible. It is not. That there is one who must be a priority. Mm. There is one who must be priority. Mm. And what we are being told here, managing in tough times for the master, managing for the master in tough times, what we are getting here is that we need to prioritize. Even as we have simplified, we have gotten the time to simplify. Now we must prioritize. Mm. For us to survive in that tough time, the lesson I gleaned from here is that we have to prioritize. Mm. What do we need to prioritize? God must be first. Mm -hmm. When God has become first, mm -hmm. he will now reorganize all the other mm -hmm. things, all the other parameters mm -hmm. in our life. Amen. That is what I would say in the interest of time. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, Ramona? Just, I'll echo what he said. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then everything else shall be added unto us. Yeah. Amen. Um, <coughs> priorities. Paul sums it all in Colossians 3, 2. Mm. Set your affection on, on things, things above, above, not things on, on earth. this earth. Mm. We must prioritize God, then the other things will come next. Amen. Thank you. Mm. All right. We move on now to Thursday. And the lesson uh, tells us of a time when no one can buy or sell. Mm. Borrowing from the book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 1, which speaks about of a time of trouble which no man... Uh, yes, has ever seen, seen or experienced since mm. there was a nation or even a time. And uh, indeed the book of Revelation from uh, Revelation chapter 13 verse 11 to 17 as it speaks about this, uh, the lamb-like beast and it continues and says that a time will come in which uh, those, the saints of God cannot be able to buy or to or sell. sell. Mm. And um, perhaps uh, our world, the world in which we live in is capitalism. Mm. It is capital based in mm. which uh, we exchange goods and services for money mm. in one way or another mm. and so uh, you offer you sell your labor to uh, wherever, to your employer mm. and at the end of the month or at whatever agreed duration they do it mm. they pay you mm. so in such a time such as this when no man can buy or sell how then do matters financial matters fit in this time of persecution mm. <coughs> I, I think i can i, I can interject mm. uh, that our lives revolve on buying and selling. Completely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is like a door and a hinge. Mm. Our life, in whichever format you look mm -hmm. at it, it revolves around that. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be the greatest temptation, attack, mm -hmm. the evil one is going to bring upon the face mm -hmm. of the earth. Mm -hmm. And that is why Revelation puts it. And the devil, as in his schemes, decided to make the possessors of lands and money mm. drunk with the cares of life mm. so that our attention is fixed not that buying land is ba bad mm -hmm. mm. not that drinking is bad it matters with what you are drinking mm. in fact looking at it from business perspective mm. i realized that jesus gave us business opportunity <laughs> That as it was in the times of Lot mm. or in the times of Noah, people are drinking. Mm. You know, as a business person, if you are looking at it, you know, people will be drinking. Mm. So you need to know what are they going to drink. Mm. Then we can start a restaurant mm. like we have the garden restaurant here in New Life mm. where people now can drink and eat. fruit juices, mm. good food because mm. people will be eating. Mm. People will be marrying. Mm. Now we need to have good event organizers. Mm. That is also a opportunity. But yeah. the point here in this context mm -hmm. is that since our lives revolve around buying and selling, mm. we need to have true trust mm -hmm. in the Lord. Amen. Because life is going to become harder. We got a preview in Corona. Mm. I was asking whether Boeing, mm. the leading plane manufacturer, Boeing, American one, Airbus, European, mm. Europe one, Embraer of Brazil and those other many 
whether they had ever imagined mm. that the planes would one time be parked <laughs> in airports and whether airports have been designed mm. to park all those planes. Yeah. And I was told, no, mm. it has never been imagined. Mm. But we got a preview, mm. a rehearsal, mm. that how will it be? Mm. That means we need to have our trust more grounded in the Lord. In the Lord because it will be the true test mm. of the faith. Mm. Thank mm. you. I think now the lesson of priority comes in handy mm. when handling Thursday. Because if you've prioritized your relationship with God, if you've made your relationship with God a paramount one, then separating yourself from your resources, from your wealth, from your job, from your friends, is not such a hard thing when Revelation 13 is happening. So we really need to put our prior We need to simplify. First, we need to put God first. We need to simplify where there is need. And then we need to prioritize God in our lives. And then he will help us even in the times of trouble like daniel says that the times of trouble that has never been seen yeah elder thank you very much um on thursday we can borrow from uh, tuesday mm. we can only survive during this time of trouble mm. if we simplify yes because the more wealth we have the more resources we have we are likely to compromise mm. And it's God's desire that we don't compromise. Mm. So let us simplify, knowing that during that time of trouble, actually, if you look at the book, uh, Al Writings, mm. page 63, mm. Ellen White says that in that time, God will provide. Yes. It is not what we have Amen. that will save us. Amen. It is yes. who? God it will is, it is God. Amen. So the more we simplify, the better. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, just to chip in, because I know you want to wrap up. Mm. Uh, I, I saw commonality between lesson 8 and this lesson. Mm. The success which we looked at, planning for success. Mm. In the context of managing for the master, what then do we do as we prioritize? It will help us to avoid things like debts. Mm. Avoid things like debts. Mm. Prioritize. If there are debts, we need to dispense with them. Mm. Because we are talking of managing for the master. Mm. The resources which makes us to be in the whole financially, economically and all that. Mm. Then we must refrain from things which continue to make us sink deeper and deeper deep into, into debts and the likes. Mm. Indeed, indeed. A wonderful lesson to all of us mm. and uh, calling us to trust in God, not in our resources and in the things that God gives us. Mm. And so uh, in closing, I'll ask my sister Ramona to offer for us a closing prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us this Sabbath day. Um, as we've learned, Lord, so many lessons to put you first, to prioritize, to simplify. And all this in helping, in managing for the master till he comes. The master is you, Jesus. We cannot do this on our own. We require your strength. Please strengthen us. Please forgive us for the places where we have not prioritized you, where we have dealt, we have thought that our resources are our help. Dear Jesus, we pray for the Sabbath blessings and Sabbath rest throughout the day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.